Beat number nine. What's up, y'all? Welcome to the new blog, Respect the Hate. Got uh, my man Howard B. Knox, Maverick, DJ Val Beats. Val Beats. Val Beats, straight out of Boston. We're going to talk about a, a lot of subjects today. Uh, the first subject we're going to talk about is clearing samples. When you don't clear a sample, are you robbing the original artist? Um, I say... Actually, kind of what you were saying, yeah, it's almost like it depends. But uh, I honestly think when you're not clearing that sample, think about the artist or the producer that's putting in the work into that. Now, that artist may have made their money, you know, for whatever song or whatever was sampled. Now, just the rebirth of that material into something else, it also takes the creativity of that producer to put something extra into that to make it. Now, if it's a straight loop, I don't know. You know, I mean, again, that's one of those things that's, right. that's it depends. Right. But if you're taking and you're really being creative with that sample, it is what it is. But, I mean, but, but here's the thing: there are EDM DJs using straight samples and making EDM DJs make millions of dollars. These aren't. Two hundred dollar night DJs. Yeah, these dudes are making their own songs, making Avicii. millions, and no nobody on, is getting paid on the back end. Nobody. Hip hop producers get scrutinized for samples yeah. and like where, where's the where's, I mean, where's the justice? I mean, for one, I don't know. I don't know if it's the same climate today as it's always been, because you know hip hop is not selling what the numbers that it used to. You know, but people are still out there like searching for people. You know, but at the end of the day, if you're, you know, on a smaller label and stuff, you know, you might get a cease and desist letter, but nobody is like taking you to court for like millions of dollars because it's a lot of people that's not selling. So it's, it's an you know, it depends on the economy of going after the samples, whether people are going to do it. Now, as far as whether it's right or wrong, just like I was saying earlier, it depends. Because, you know, if you, just like, you know, the example that I gave, if you're a Burt Bacharach, and, you know, there's plenty of songs that people have taken of his and covered and done, Look of Love, House is Not a Home, Luther Vandross, like all of this stuff. And if somebody's singing your song and I sat there for, you know, months or years and I wrote this song, mm -hmm. that's that's my song, that's my words, that's my music. I sat there on the piano and I hammered that out. Yeah. You know, so like when you sing the look of love, you know, yeah, you owe me. I, that's, that's my creativity. But I think people are take like there's a fine line in sampling. So people are taking, you got people who, who sample and they loop. And as soon as I hear the song, I'm like, oh, snap, that's Sting, that's Bill Collins, that's whoever. And if it's that apparent, I can't be mad at the original artist going after it. But now, you also have producers who chop up their samples to the point of, like, no recognition. If I'm chopping a, a, a two-bar loop, and I chop it down to the individual note, the note, mm -hmm. and I just and I put the note back together in a different order, what's the difference between using that, chopping that song and resequencing those notes and taking a C keyboard C C and, 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 and playing it out both differently. Notes. But you, you have never talked to, uh, what's the dude that owns um, Tough City Records? Aaron, Aaron Fuchs or whatever? Tough City uh, America or whatever? He, he owns, not Funky Drummer, but uh, uh, Impeach the President. He sues over the drum hits. Right. Yeah. And I think that's yeah, bull. That's, that's, I think that's <laughs> I think that's bull. See, because 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 that's that's my line. My line is like I can see you you um, fighting for core progressions and things like right, that. Yeah. You know, but to say like on, you pause, pause, okay um, stuff. So like I, you know, there's different like even when you get like those uh, CDs with the loops. And stuff yeah. on there. The more, amen break. Uh, you know. Do you remember that thing I sent you with the amen break? The dude yeah. was talking about the amen break. He said those dudes, 
that that thing is on so many of those loop CDs, and they don't get it. The guy, the Amen break, they don't get any credit. The Winstons, nothing. The Winstons, yeah, right? The Winstons, nothing. Yeah, I mean, it was a B side on a. Yeah, but I mean, so to me, like, if you specify as royalty free, which a lot of the 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 presets and stuff in your keyboard, a lot of stuff in the programs, they're royalty free. But otherwise, you're you're sitting up saying that you have ownership over this sound, and you don't. Like, you're, but you have ownership on how that sound is manipulated. The that's, chords. But, if you play a C and then, and then a, a A major and then a B minor, you have ownership on that on the chord changes. That's crazy. That's that's like 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 not 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 the chord progression. Not like how I thought to myself these note these notes should be ordered. But you got people who are suing like you know something. The way that the drum head sounds on that snare, that's mine. And I'm like, that's that, 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 that's, that's, too that's far. crazy. See, See, that's drums, too far. I don't think drums. I don't think you, you should. Well, know. why not? Why not? Because because at the end of the day, people can tell what the impeach the president snare yeah, sounds like. It's true. People can tell funky drummer, what the funky drummer big, snare big, sounds right, like. Right. The synthetic substitution snare. Right. They can tell what those snare sounds like. So if I can hear that snare and automatically tell what it is, what's the difference? Because you gotta that would be that. like trying to sue for hitting a key on the on the motif, just hitting the C key. But that's what people are suing for. No, no, no. People are suing for change, like chord changes, like I a melody. They're suing for melody. Okay. Now They're suing for snare. Now what what, what Marvin Gaye's estate is suing Robin Thicke for? Right. Like that's the whole like baseline. And that's the f they're suing for. But they won. Yeah, they won. But they didn't sample that. No, they didn't. They. They they replay the it's same. It's like an interpolation melody. or something. I don't know what. It's it not does. even the same. It's 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 it's, it's a, it maybe is a different key. It's the right. same feel. Right. It's so it's not even feel. the same song. Right. Same feel. So at what case, point are we like... drawing the line in the sand? So, like I said, for me, it depends. Like if you, I mean, I've heard Pete Rock flip certain stuff, and I mean he'll sample it. And it's in no way the same order of the song that he took it from. And it's, you know, com com mm -hmm. completely different. Mm -hmm. To me, that's creative. But now, if you have Sugar Hill Gang, Good Times, you know, uh, sample for Rappers, Rappers Delight, Delight right. that's the exact same but, song. But we're, 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 where does sampling uh, start with? Like, if you, if, you, if you sample somebody, do you think about that artist that you sample? Like, how they're living their life right now? No. I can't say I can't say no. that I do, but I at the same time like I've watched. No, I, no, no. you're like yo, that joint's hot. Let me get that. Let me get that. <laughs> no, no, that no, no. Sink. Come on. So hold on, I'm not gonna say that I do. No. but I'm not gonna say that I shouldn't because I've actually looked at. Um, I don't know if you've seen the the documentary. Hit him up on Twitter. No, no, it's a documentary. It's called <laughs> it's called Copyright Criminals. And it goes into a lot of stuff in terms of sampling and copyright mm -hmm. and things like that. And they talked to Clyde Stubblefield, who is Clyde the, Stubblefield, the funky, the, funky, funky drummer. drummer, drummer. Um, you know, and they talked to him about you know that funky drummer break. And he was like, you know, I'm not looking to get rich off of it, but you could think somebody would say, hey, you know, this is from Clyde Stubblefield, you know, like or give me some, some you know acknowledgement from it. But, you know, he's still drumming today. And, like, people don't know who he is. Is he really? He's still drumming today. Like, in Alabama. That's like the dude that did um, the in substance, uh, Mel, Mel, Melvin, B Melvin Bliss. He, he, had, he had a documentary you know, put out. He was it's, like, it's no one, of, this, this has been used so many times and nobody right, even and knows I, who I am. And, Boy, I mean, you can just. Mm -hmm. And I didn't know there was a video for us, so I go on YouTube and watch the video. And I'm like. They could have called Dougie Fresh in so, to be in the video. So the, this is the thing. But they bit off of that. Because there was a Dougie song before Teach Me How to Dougie. So, like, the same year. So these cats out of Dallas. Oh, see, yeah, I didn't know that. The, the, so, so these cats who did the Teach Me How to Dougie, mm -hmm. there's a song out that same year called The Dougie. Called the Dougie. And they called Dougie Fresh. And they have Dougie Fresh in their video. So they did the respect and had Dougie Fresh on the car dancing with them doing the Dougie. And, and nobody then, knows who they are. And nobody knows who they are. And the Teach Me How to Dougie cats came out afterwards and right. now everybody knows who but, they but are. But Dougie Fresh does play Teach Me How to Dougie when he performs. Yeah. Oh, yeah, he does. Yeah. But, sure. no, but, they gave, but they gave him the respect. But this is the thing about 
sampling that I feel like a lot of these original artists are kind of shooting themselves in the foot. If you got hip hop as an art form that, that you know, as a segment of hip hop that does a lot of sampling and they do a lot of creative stuff with these samples and things like that, stop coming out here and saying you're going to charge them $100,000 to use the sample because right. that discourages yeah. people from using your work. Right. You could sit up and probably get a whole generation of people to rediscover your work. Who you are. If you, mm -hmm. if you just like put some sensible rules on sampling, say, hey, you know, for everybody who releases you know, my song commercially, you pay a $500 fee up front, and then you give me however many cents off of the album right, that you sent. Right. Right. So, right. But, but at the same time, like RZA's doing, RZA is putting you on to those people. Oh, yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But he's not, he's not sitting up and... He's not, it's not like he's Big not, Papa. You're just playing the Isley Brothers. Right, game. right. He's not, taking, he's not taking the straight idea of somebody else and just making dough off of the, 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 their idea as is. He's 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 being creative, but From us your us creation. right us being you know inquisitive as we are are like how did he create that you know right. and, and that that fosters like this this desire to go out and, and seek That's other fun. stuff. Now, what do you think when dudes get someone like Dre does this a lot? Dre will get someone to play something over because mm -hmm. Dre is a smart dude, right? Because the thing and about change it, it a little because the thing about it is you pay a different amount for covering a song than you do for sampling a song. And so that's why Dre is a smart dude. But that uh, what's 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 the joint um, that uh, off the Shaft soundtrack that he used for the, uh, 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 that corrupt is rapping on? I know what you're talking about. Uh, you talking that's about a straight loop. The, the next episode. <laughs> oh, no, the bag lady. Oh, that, the thing was a straight loop. Straight loop. But no, that actually is a. So that's is that an interpolation? That, that wasn't an, an interpolation. It's not the one off the Shaft soundtrack though. So he he got over by finding the other version of it, <laughs> uh. <laughs> <laughs> which is what a lot of people do too. But that's what happens. A lot of times, people won't go to the original sample; they go to the artist who sampled the sample. That's what that's what yeah. Mary did I mean, with with our Ed mm -hmm. She didn't sample. Um, I gotta have it. She, I mean, she sampled. I gotta have it. She didn't, no. She sampled. Um, what's the original? Uh, whatever the original. Uh, she didn't sample his, so he didn't get anything. It's crazy. I mean, it's Dre is a smart dude because Dre, you can see Dre knows the industry and he knows how to get the work around. Because at the end of the day, no matter what Dre samples, like people are gonna char charge him an arm and a leg. For so it. did Erica Badu sample Dre or did she sample? Yeah, Dre absolutely, she should sample Dre. <laughs> 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 but you know, like Dre, I mean, Dre could sit up and he could sample. I mean, London Bridge is falling down. You know, off of a, a Sesame Street album, and it's gonna go platinum. And so people know the selling power of Dre. And so when he comes and tries to negotiate a price for that sample, they're gonna be like, "Look, I want you know a hundred gazillion billion trillion right. dollars." Right, right. You know, so that's what really kind of makes it unfair is because they're sitting up playing by different rules for different people. Like if you made it standard yeah. for people, like you would have like. Some some people don't want their stuff sampled, so right. it is what it is. But at all, right? At all, right? Um, Paul McCartney. I, mean, I, I can understand that, right? Too because I mean, at at some point, some people who sample stuff, I mean, they chop it up and just make a mess of it. I oh, know, but so, at some point, somebody whack is like it's gonna you, be you, over. you 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 put beats on SoundCloud. There's nobody stopping. Uh, a whack ass MC from downloading New York Beats and, and making a full make a full album and putting it on iTunes. But yeah. at the end of the day, to me, that's I mean, that's whatever. Like that's not a reflection of you. Nobody listens to like somebody on SoundCloud who did a, a whole album of Paul McCartney beats and they suck and then now they they don't like Paul McCartney anymore. <laughs> like if you like <laughs> if you liked him before, you like him now. Like this dude didn't ruin Paul McCartney. Yeah, for but you. that's what happened with the what was it the Gray album with da uh, uh, Danger Mouse and right. yo they were like see he got cease and desist. Let's they were right. like nah, that, that, it was whack to me. That that's, was so that, whack to me. I'm sorry. I mean, it was. Well, I mean, look what he was brought me in the Beatles. It wasn't a lot of, you know. Whatever. I actually like the. I, I like the some gray of the album. stuff on it. Was, I like the gray album. The the um, Knife Wonder uh, joint was a whole lot better. And uh, Kev Brown Brown album. Kev Brown. Mm -hmm. And do everybody. There was so many. Black I, I think albums. I think that I think that was a Dilla black album. I don't have it, but now, really? now you got me about to search I, for I, it. I, I, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> YouTube. <laughs> 
Wow. You know, so. But um, like I say, as a, as an artist, I wouldn't think anything of somebody using my stuff, like, cause it's not it's not a reflection. You of just me. want to get paid, though. I. I mean, for me, I probably like I don't care about it. Like I'm gonna be honest with you. If somebody took a beat that I put out now and they chopped it up or whatever, dude, I got I got dudes who'll come to me and they'll say, "Yo, I took your beat and I, I I made a song. It's on SoundCloud. Take a listen." And I'll post and be like, "Yo, check out such and such who who rhymed over my beat." I don't really care. Like they're whack though. Dude, I've had that. <laughs> I've had it. Do you post it? I'll, I'll, I'll post it, you know. But, you know, like, I'll just be like, yo, but what if good, they take good your, looking. What if they take your beat and go and make a song and get signed to a label? Then what? I mean, if you, where the money starts coming in, bro. Notice, though, on the table, I'm on in. I mean, yeah. if, you took my, if you took my stuff just as I released it or right. as just as I put it out, yeah, I want a piece of that. But if you took it and you chopped it up and did something else... I'm gonna be like, good job. I like your chops. I mean, cool. I, I'm, I'm gonna leave it at that. Like, I'm not, I'm not gonna hate no on you. No recognition. If 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 you take it and you no, chop no it up, no co-producer. No, I, I'm not even gonna ask for co-producer. If you took like it, that. if you took it and you chopped it up and you did a good job, like you chopped that stuff up to something that's different from what mm -hmm. I did. Oh, yeah, you know, I, I can understand. Did, that. Yeah, if you chopped it up different from what I did, I'm not Yo, even gonna ask for that. And you were, we we interviewed Kwame. Mm -hmm. Eminem tried to take. Full credit um, for, for yeah. the Lloyd Banks on fire. On fire. Mm -hmm. on fire. When all he did was add a few keyboard. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, he tried to take full credit mm -hmm. and, and put Kwame as co-producer. Oh, no. At first, he didn't want to even put him as co-producer. Wow. Co like, come on, dude. I mean, uh, I mean, but... So, he said he read it produced by Eminem. Yeah. So, he went off. But the thing about it is Eminem just added something on top of what Kwame did. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's that's not that's what I'm called talking. the Puffy syndrome. Right, right. right. That's <laughs> not that's not what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about like you take my beat and then you add some snow bells on top of it. Snow bells. And now <laughs> and now you talked about talked about you produced this. No, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about like you took my stuff and you chopped it up to the point where like now the chord progression is different than what I did. You know, and now like you got elements of my song, but you made a whole different idea. But that's that's what right. a, a producer taking another producer's song and chopping. So it, is, it, is I, I do. I, I'm not going to do it, but I'm not gonna. You know. But why would you even give that producer any shine? Because you don't. That's why I say I'm not. I'm not going to shout you out. Oh, but, okay, but, okay. No, no, no. Okay, I'm not going to okay. shout you out. But I'm like, sitting in the car to your crib. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, I'm, you gonna get I'm, it. Not, I'm not going to shout you out, but I'm not going to hate on you for doing it. I'm not going to be like. Oh my God! I'm gonna hunt you down, and now <laughs> yeah, yeah, now I'm gonna hunt you down uh, because see you in the park. right, you know, I'm I'm not really gonna care about it, you know. Okay. It is what it is. All right, uh, let's talk about the, let's move on to the next subject. Respect to hate people. Uh, down south MCs that can do a whole East Coast album. Who? Oh, name, name something. Na name name some down south MCs that can do an East Coast album. Bun B. Ti, Ti, okay. Scarface, Scarface, Outkast, Ludacris. I, mm, I don't know about Luda. Really? No, nah, Luda. 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 A, a whole East Coast like Alchemist Trinidad and Luda. Trinidad James. Hmm? What? <laughs> <laughs> Alchemist is a pretty versatile dude. So with Alchemist, I mean he's producing like Snoop and stuff. I'm, so. I'm talking about straight East Coast beats. But that's what I'm saying. Like I'm saying like you know because you're like Alchemist and Luda. I think that could happen. Yeah. That could actually happen. Al Alchemist did a whole project with Currency, right. uh, you know. So I think Alchemist is versatile enough. Like where, like Al Alchemist is a dude. He he, his knowledge of music is so broad. Yeah. Like he can give almost anybody anything. Okay. Alchemist is producing with Rick Ross. Rick, Rick Ross, Rick Ross. Is, you know, another Rick Ross. Yeah. Um, Well, Trick Daddy. I I, I don't yeah. know enough Trick Daddy songs to really even speak on Trick Daddy. So I can't say. Like I don't know. I, other than stuff that comes on like a video, I don't really know his music like that. So. Um. Maybe he could in the album. I don't know. I don't think so. Uh, so I'm originally from Louisiana. Ross, would you consider you still? I mean, Ross, Ross is, is South, Southern. Artist. Okay, yeah, I would yeah, say Rick Ross. Yeah. So I'm originally from Louisiana. Rick Ross is probably the top artist that could probably do a whole East Coast album with East Coast producers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I I would agree with that. But just like I was saying, I'm from Louisiana. There's what about a dude, Wayne? There's a dude in Louisiana, not Wayne, but there's a dude from Louisiana named Max Minnelli. He does. He he's actually done a, a lot of stuff with big name people. He has like a whole East Coast CD where he's done like mixtape stuff over like beats from you know mm -hmm. Raekwon and all this stuff. 
I was like, huh, I'm actually impressed. I think if you gave dudes down south, if they if they wanted to, a lot of dudes, I don't know, this cat from Houston, Killer Kyle Young, have you ever heard of him? No. He's got a song with Phil Ade. He's got like a lot of stuff with the Houston Swisher House dudes. I've seen his videos on MTV. He's rap rapping over uh, Biggie, who shot you. Um, I think he's like a dude who could do it. Like, so, like there's some dudes down south who... I We're think rustling that, thug. I Not think, so much. Yeah, I think yeah, yeah, I think so. I don't think so, cause you don't um, think so? cause the thing about it is a lot of East Coast stuff is probably more up, up pace, faster right, up pace, tempo, right, right. and so uh, Slim Thug, I think with his voice and delivery and stuff, like I think the slowest. Wait, stuff is, is isn't Jay Electronica from Louisiana originally? Where is Jay Electronica from? I don't know. Like the dude claims like Detroit, New Orleans. I don't, I don't, I don't know where he's from. Like I really don't. So if he's from down south, I would say yes. He could do one of, one of the albums. I would but, love to see T.I. over a straight East Coast beats. Like the the joint we were talking about in the car with, with CeeLo singing over it. Yeah. Like that, that beat right there is just crazy to me. Hmm. I mean, I mean, you know, I have this conversation all the time about the Southern artists and people say, oh, a lot of people say, oh, the South stuff is wack, it's wack, it's wack. I don't, I don't think that's necessarily true. I think it's still hip hop. I may not like all of it, but I still have to respect it as part of rap, as part of the hip hop sphere. Right. I have to. Right. You know. So, you know, I joked about Trinidad James. Beat number nine. Thank mm -hmm. you.